<laughs> Hi, Karen. Hello, Bonnie. Hold on, I'm just trying to get everything on the desk here. How is everybody tonight? <clears throat> Hi, Patty. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Sunshine. Hi, Jody. Hi, Gail. Y'all got to get a piece of paper and a notebook because we is going to school today. Look at this little artwork Leah did yesterday with a toilet paper roll. She cut the ends off the toilet paper roll and dipped it in a yogurt cup for paint. And then um, dabbed them on the paper and then used a paintbrush to do the green. Yeah, my little artist. Okay. Are we ready? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I think I'm ready. I think we'll see. <clears throat> I did mint. I did Bernie. I think it's a great idea. I didn't see the price. <clears throat> Hi, Gloria. All right, Lee says he's ready. Hi, Chow. Hi, Suzette. Carolyn. Hi, Margaret. Denise. God's Desire, Stephanie, Jennifer. The days do all run together, but it's Friday, right? Oh my gosh, I can go fishing tomorrow, you guys. Oh, that's a great price, Bernie. Yes, absolutely link it. So um, Bernie's going to link a discount for um, the Mini Mink at Joann's. That's a great price, probably because they're trying to get rid of the old pink ones because the new ones are coming out. Um, I also wanted to mention, I just posted on our Facebook group. So we had, our Facebook group is called Foiling and Stamping Fun. Um, I know Stacy's going to be late. I don't, I mean, Tracy's going to be late. 
sorry, Stacy is going to be late. Um, I don't know if Tracy's coming on or if she is here now. Um, but um, I put a link on our Facebook group. If you're not part of our Facebook group, it's Foiling and Stamping Fun, okay? The Foiling, oh, it's the new one. Even better, Bernie. I think Nancy's going to pick up one of those. Um, I put on there this little form. It's the only way I could make it easy. So you need to fill out this form. I put Foiling Stamping Fun card exchange, your name, your address, the city, the state, your zip code, and what country you're in, okay? So um, this is for the card exchange. And like I said, you'll probably be making, I would say, three to four cards, and you're going to get that many back. So if you guys, when we're done here tonight, can go in and fill that form out, it will put everybody's address in a spreadsheet for me, and then I can get you your addresses so that you'll have about two weeks to make your cards and get them in the mail. All right. <clears throat> uh, Marissa, it's about the same thing. <clears throat> okay, so today's class, I do have several videos on my, um, my YouTube. I've done this a couple of times, but I call it Stamping 101. And here are things I, I have learned and picked up over the years that I've watched a billion YouTube videos on. A lot of it is by trial and error. And I want to share my secrets of learning with you guys. Basically, cheat sheet you a little bit, okay? Because I don't want you to spend a lot of time and money the hard way like I did trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, okay? So I want to be Professor Nance <clears throat> and teach you... <laughs> I want to teach you guys how, to, how what what I like, what I don't like. Now, everything here is my own personal opinion. Of course, other people may not agree with everything I say. So let me just start off with that. <clears throat> All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is exactly what you guys just brought up, <clears throat> which is let's talk about stamping platforms. <clears throat> Nance, why do you have so many? Because, because I'm 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 one of you guys. You know why I have so many. Can't help it. <clears throat> All right. So the very first stamping platform that came out was a long, long time ago from not We Are Memory Keepers, but there was a company before We Are Memory Keepers. It's blue and white. I cannot think of the name of it. Anyway, oh, I know who it is. Hold on. <clears throat> Okay, I found it. It's this company here, Letter Press. Are they Creative Memories? Quick Cuts, that's who I was looking up. Quick Cuts, okay? So Quick Cuts came out with this very long machine and what you could basically do was stamp from it and then um, you, can run, you can run it through your, at that time we only had a Big Kick or a, a, a what's that machine, Attico machine or something like that. Anyway, long, long time ago. And a lot of people didn't realize what the potential of that machine was because we basically thought you could only use it for letterpress. We thought you put your um, embossing folders or your dies in there, you put ink on them, you run them through the machine, okay? And this paper is this very, it's basically soft watercolor paper. That's how I describe it, okay? Um, moving fast forward, okay? This young lady named Ileana came out with, and this is probably about four years back, I'm going to say. Hi, Caroline. Came out with the Misty. The Misty had pink stickers on it. And it came with some of these little round magnets which snapped together and smacked your fingers. And it came with this foam. And it came with this pack of paper which goes inside here. So kind of like this, okay? I took one of these. I laminated it. I put sticky grit on it. And then the foam. The foam you take out when you're using clear stamps. I'm sorry, when you're using rubber stamps. You leave the foam in here when you are using clear stamps. And the name Misty is exactly what it implies. Most incredible stamping tool ever invented. Most incredible stamp tool invented. This is my own wreath maker here I made out of paper. Anyway, as time progressed, 
She came out with a mini Misty. A lot of competitors jumped on board. Um, she also has a large one too, I believe. And you can change the colors of your stickers now. You can purchase them. You can purchase different magnets, measurement tools, rulers, things like that. Um, it was really expensive. It was, <laughs> I want to say $69 when it first came out. I don't know if that's correct. Somebody correct me. But it's it's a pretty nice size tool. And what it basically does is whenever you go to stamp something, and I'm sure if you watch any YouTubers, almost everybody has one of these, right? Because you guys saw me make that mistake with the stamp with the fairy yesterday. You just take your piece of paper. I should have cut some paper. And then you put your magnets on there. And previously, we all use what's called wooden stamps or clear stamping blocks. Clear stamping blocks are acrylic. They come in all different sizes. They work fine. You stick your stamp to there and you stamp. But if you don't get a clear image or you misalign it, now you got to kind of look through and see through and fit. And you might get it right with a clear stamp, but you're never going to get it right with a wooden stamp and you, unless you use what's called a stamp a majig. All right, here's a stamp a majig. See, this is how old Nancy is with the stamping community. Okay, a stamp a majig allows you to stamp the image, align this clear sheet over where you need it to go, put it back in place and stamp over. I'm not gonna go into the schooling of this because a lot of you don't have this. Great for wooden stamps, that's a class for another day, okay? But if you have clear stamps or you have unmounted your wood stamps, what that means is you've taken the sticky off of your wood stamps and you can buy this material called cling, easy mount cling, which looks like this. And what Easy Mount Cling does is it has adhesive on one side so you can stick it to your stamp. And then it has the um, smooth side that will stick to your block. Okay, so it basically turns your wooden rubber stamps into cling stamps. Cling is how it mounts. Okay, or you have clear stamps. We're trying to move blocks out of the way. Um... Because they're heavy, they take up space, and honestly, the Misty does everything for you. So again, you can stamp up with your wooden block, and let's say, let's just say, oh, I stamped it. I don't like how that looks. I didn't get enough ink at the bottom. Now I have to re-ink it. And very carefully look through this and line it up and stamp it again. Well, already you can see I double stamped that and it's off to the right, okay? So what she did is she came up with this most incredible stamping tool invented and said, hey, let's stick it to the lid. Let's ink it up, let's press it down. And oh, I messed up, I didn't get enough ink. I can go back in and it's gonna stamp in the exact same location, okay? So yes, genius, but it was taken off of another stamping platform idea. But that stamping platform was kind of used in a different way. Like I said, it was used in letter press more than anything. Also, Fiskars had out at the time a clear piece of plastic. You might have this, and it has four little spongy feet on it. I used to have one. I gave it away. You do the same kind of thing with this Fiskars platform. You take this clear plastic, you push it down, and if you didn't like it, you could stamp it again. But it was basically a giant stamping block, okay? She's the only one that took this giant plastic platform, incorporated it with this magnetic base, which is what makes it cool, and allows you to do multiple stamping. Well, of course, everybody jumped on the bandwagon, and I'm not trying to be like the history teacher here, but... <clears throat> she had her big one. She had her giant one, which is for scrapbooking. Um, then she came out with the mini, which is perfect for card makers. And this is the one you see me use all the time. But the crafting community did start to rebel a little bit. And we rebelled because, and I will say I was one of them, I spent $70 on this and it's starting to crack. Okay, so right here where the glue adhesive is, you can see there are stress cracks in here. There are stress cracks, just all, this is all plastic. And there's a stress crack, a huge one right here. I contacted the company and I said, hey, my platform's starting to crack. You know what they said? Okay, when it breaks, let us know. All right, so I was a little ticked. I was like, 
I spent $70 on this and you're telling me you're not going to replace it and I have stress cracks in it. So Nancy took, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I took clear Oracle vinyl and I wrapped this whole top piece with vinyl just to try to help kind of stabilize it a little bit. I think it kind of helped. Oh, I can feel this stress crack goes all the way through. I think it kind of helped, but I don't really use this big one as much. So I went to the smaller guy. And because this is mainly for card making, now he is starting to have stress cracks right here in the hinges. So I'm just kind of careful with them now. But Stampin' Up! has come out with a Stamparatus, which is basically four doors. You get a door here, a door here, a door here. You get, got all these different places you can put the hinges in and out, which is cool. People were making their own. They were taking um, one of these little DVD cases and they put a little piece of magnet in here, you know, like we get for um, the vent covers. Let me show you. So these Wise DIYers put a piece of, this is a 5x7 um, photo, magnetic photo frame, so it's adhesive on this side. And they put it in here and they said, hey, I don't need to spend $70. I'll make my own. I'll put a little piece of craft foam in here. So those of you guys that don't have one, you can try this. Put a little piece of craft foam in there. They stuck this down on there. And then they put their paper in and they use the little magnets. And the magnets you can buy anywhere. And they made their own DIY, right? Which was great. Um, but it's very small. It's limited. You can't do big pieces of paper. And it is still hit or miss because your stamps are different sizes and so on. But it's not $70. It's less than $10 to make that. Um, so you see some of these. Well, Tim Holtz was kind of... Im improving on the design. So here's what Tim Holtz did. Tim Holtz said, look, I'm going to make mine out of heavier duty, sturdy plastic, which he did. I'm going to make it open on two sides. So it has a little uh, bordered edge here. So your paper doesn't slide down, but it's open on two sides. So if you wanted to do scrapbook or 12 by 12 paper, you could do that. But here's what made his different. It's still magnetic. His lid comes off. So his lid lifts right out of this little channel. It's not magnetic. I thought it was magnetic, but it's not. It just lifts out and you flip the lid. So you can go to the clear side or you can go to the rubber side. No more having to take the foam in and out of it. You just flip the lid, which was genius. You know how much this sold for brand new? $40. Perfect price point. Very large, very easy to clean up. The other thing he did is the grid lines in here. So let me show you these grid lines. These grid lines are basically, oh, this is the new one. On the original one, this pink grid line is painted on. So if people used a stays on cleaner, it, it came off, okay? So she, he improved the, the lid. He improved the size. He improved the grid lines. These are etched in, so you don't have to worry about washing them off. He really did improve this. He put the measurements down here so they're not stickers. They're black. You don't have to worry about getting ink on them. He really blew it out of the park. And I think brand new when it first came out, it was $40, okay? Well, let's just say a lawsuit ensued. And in the United States, they're not supposed to be able to manufacture or sell this anymore. You can get it in Europe. You cannot get it in the United States. Now, any stores that had them in stock are allowed to sell them. Um, and yes, yeah, Tim Colts came out with a mini one. So for those of you that are in Europe or can order from European stores, you can still get this. All right. Now, in both of mine, I put a little piece of sticky grid. It just helps without having to use the magnets. Honestly, I think I don't really rely on the magnets anymore because... They used to pinch your fingers when they snap together. These are powerful little magnets. They're not regular store ma magnets. So I put a little washi tape on there so I can pull them apart a little easier. Um, all right, so those are stamp tools, okay? Um, but I would say that whichever one you get, Misty, Tim Holtz, um, We Are Memory Keepers had one. They got it off the market. Um, who else? Um, 
Stampin' Up, like I said, has a Stamparatus. And Stampin' Up is similar to this design, but you have, I think, three or four of these sizes. So it's like one up here, one up here, and one up here. So that if you're doing layering stamping, it's pretty cool because you can go layer one, and then you have like a lid up here. You can go layer two, and then you have a lid over here. You can do layer three. So that's a great idea on Stampin' Up's part. So Stampin' Up's kind of moved their direction a little bit. She hasn't gone after them yet. Couture Creations just came out with theirs, I believe. Yes. So here's my point. Whatever one you can get your hands on, I do think it's worth it. Do not throw away all of your blocks. You will still use your blocks. Um, but these do kind of improve your stamping life, okay? I'm not really endorsing for one or the other. People say, if I have one, do I need another one? My answer is going to be no. You're going to find that whichever one you are able to purchase, whether it be the mini, the large, the Tim Holtz, the Misty, whatever it is, you only need one, okay? So just get one if you can. Uh, the Hero Arts Misty, all they did was change the tape from pink to black. Okay, so Stamparatus is retired? Okay, could be. They changed the tape from pink to black. Yes, there was one called Hampton Arts, which is an identical copy of this, but the tape was blue. <laughs> so uh, the Hero Arts one is they're changing this tape from pink to black, going in collaboration with Hero Arts. Now, sometime this year, they're supposed to be launching a new Misty. The new Misty is supposed to have new hinges. The door is supposed to have a little bit of a lip here. See how I have tape on mine because there's no lip. The Tim Holtz one has a lip on it. See this little lip? So the Tim Holtz one is easier to grab. So supposedly this is going to be revamped for this year, but they want to, I think what they probably wanted to do was clear out all of the pink ones. So they changed the stickers to black and they now call them the hero arts ones. That's really what I think happened. You got to move your inventory, you refresh it, you advertise it a different way. That's what they did. I just realized that this is broken. Okay. So Bernie, Bernie said she saw them at Joann's for $34.99 great price. If you don't have one, I would definitely pick one up. Yeah, tamped. these I believe are still allowed to be made and sold in Europe because she couldn't sue in Europe. She can only sue in the United States. <laughs> okay, so that's the stamping press story. My point was you don't need three or four of them. One will work good. I do like this one if you can get it because it has a large platform. So when you're doing background stamps, my only issue with this is every once in a while it does miss because of how big it is, especially when I'm, so it's nice that, um, I know Stacy puts a little piece of fun foam underneath hers. You can do that, but this is a really cool one. If you, if you can't and you can get yourself a Misty, uh, cheaper, right. Unless you're like us, Karen, and you have full set syndrome and you just have to have one of everything. <laughs> you have friends come over and you're doing cropping and things like that okay all right let's talk about inks real quick because i think it was was it marissa yesterday asking about the inks Let's talk about inks. Okay, there are basically, um, I'm gonna say two types of stamping ink, and I'm gonna talk about specialty ink in a moment. Okay, so stamping inks come in basically two forms. Yes, please take notes. I'm actually gonna write this down, and I try not to go off on a tangent. Okay, so basically you have dye inks. What does a dye ink do when you dye your shirt? Okay, a dye ink, oh, it was Jennifer that asked yesterday because Jennifer, you were asking about dye inks and stress oxides, right? That's I think who it was. Okay, so dye inks soak into your paper. Okay, so just remember when you dye your shirt, when you guys do, what, what was that called with the rainbow shirts? Tie dye, okay? Dye inks soak in, okay? 
pigment inks are like a paint. What does a paint do? A paint stays on top. So when you guys think of paper, all right, um, the paper is porous, right? And I'm talking regular paper at this point. So when you stamp with, and I'm just going to keep using this crappy little silicone stamp, a dye ink a dye ink is going to dry almost instantly okay the color will dry back because as it's drying what's it doing it's soaking into the paper okay and these come in many different ink pads. They come in sponge or felt ink pads. And I will go over that difference with you in a second as well. Okay. So a lot of us like dye inks for part number one because it dries instantly. Okay, dye inks, that's right, Gloria, they're water-based. Thank you. Okay. Dye inks... Um, do tend to dry out after a while, depending on what kind of a pad they're in. As long as you keep them, all of your inks, I should say. When storing your inks, you do not have to store your ink pads up top down. That is a old wives' tale, okay? Ink sits inside of the sponge pad. This is your sponge pad. As little molecules, okay? It does not matter. It's housed in that sponge whether you have your ink pad this way or the ink pad this way. The ink is not moving. It's sitting in your pad. Okay? Um, you may or may not need reinkers. That's total personal preference. There is a refresher that they sell which basically remoistens your inks. Okay? I will be honest, I don't own a lot of reinkers. I keep telling you guys this because I have so many different ink pads that an ink pad does dry out. I'm sure I have a different company with a similar color that I can use until I decide if I need to buy a reinker or if I just need to throw the ink pad out, okay? Sometimes when you get ink pads, they get what looks like mold on the top of them. Stampin' Up! ink pads are known for this. Let me see if I have one. Here's one. It's not mold, okay? So do you see over here where there's like bubbles? Can you, can you see that? It looks like little white bubbles. Okay, it's not mold. <laughs> I know, but that's what it looks like when you open it, all right? What that is, is it's when the ink starts to get into settling, the air bubbles pop up. When the air bubbles pop up, this is what it looks like. Now, it's it's normal. It does happen. It's not mold. You can take a paper towel and wipe it down. A lot of ink companies have fixed their formulation. You see this a lot more in older ink pads than the newer ones. So the newer pads, you really don't see this as much. But if you see it, please don't freak out. It is not mold. It's air bubbles that come up to the surface and pop. And when the air bubbles pop it leaves this kind of skin. It's not gonna hurt your stamping at all. Just use a light baby wipe or paper towel to wipe that off, okay? And if you do have mold, we gotta talk about how you're storing your stuff. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk about pigment inks. Pigment inks, like I said, are kinda like a paint. P is for paint. That's how I remember the difference, okay? Pigment inks stay wet longer. Okay, there's an advantage and a disadvantage to that. The advantage is you can emboss it, so heat embossing. Okay, so if you want to stick your heat embossing to, to dye ink, it's never going to stick because this is dry. Now, there's a hack for that. The hack is you stamp over it with Versamark. So if I stamp over this with Versamark, then Versamark is clear. I can do that. But... With a pigment ink, 
pigment inks are kind of like paint where they are a little thicker. They're usually a little creamier. Um, they stay wet a little longer. You can emboss over them. Their colors are normally brighter. They don't normally dry back because the ink is staying on top. All right. And if I miss a question, you guys are going to have to just to repeat it because I, I can't see all of the comments. And like I said, I think Stacy and Tracy are um, um, I just got a text from work. That was weird. Stacy and Tracy aren't here yet, right? Okay. Um, all right. So what companies are dye inks and what companies are pigment inks and why would I recommend or use them? Um, for pigments e inks, that's easier for me. There's a company called Colorbox. I don't have any Colorbox inks. That's not true. That's a lie. I have three Colorbox inks. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so these are the Colorbox inks I have. I gave away all of my Colorbox inks. So here's color box. It tells you right on the front pigment ink. Yeah, I could I could type something up, Lee. Sure. Okay, pigment ink. Pigment ink. I got, I gave all of them away except for these because what happened when I stamped with these? Shh, smeared right on the right side of my hand. You guys have left-handed syndrome. Have you guys heard of that? Left-handers when they write because they write left-handed, um, the ink always gets on the side of their hand. Well, that's what happened to me when I was using pigment inks, okay? It just, it's beautiful when it dries or when you heat emboss it, but if you don't have the patience for that, it's going to smear. Now, Versafine Claire has improved their pigment ink so that it dries a little quicker. I will say that. That's why I love Versafine Claire. But Versafine Claire only has like 24 colors. Oh, they that's right. They did go out of business. Colorbox got is no longer in business, by the way. Um, but they they were like the original go-to stamping company that everybody could get all of their inks and colors. Okay. You can buy refills for that. You could buy refills for them. Okay. Um, yes, they sold this little cool sponging. Oh, the, the sponge pads, they used to come unglued is the problem I had. They would unglue from the bottom of the pad. Like, see this? That's what would happen. And they their ink pads would kind of get disintegrative and, and sticky. Yeah. Some are good, some are bad, just depends. I don't personally have any more of these. I gave them away because I found there were other inks that I could use. If you have these, you know, you can use them. The other reason I don't have them is I really just could not find... Um, a reason to use these inks because of the, that's right. They're the good old G of stamps color blocks, right? But they, they are, they have retired. They used to sell this little shading tool with these little sponges. It's, it's gone now, but it was the original stamp company and we all used to make cards with these and then we'd smear the crap out of them. Like, Shh. All right. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> All right, so newer companies have come out with pigment ints. Like I said, Versafine Claire is great. They have a nice spongy pad. I prefer the sponge pad over the felt pad because there's more give with the sponge pad. Um, with the sponge pad, it's very light tapping. I cannot explain this to you. If you have Stampin' Up! pads or Versafine pads, you know what I'm talking about. They're very soft. They're very easy. There's no lines on there when you're stamping. Here, I'll show you. The color oozes out. I like that word, oozes. Um, just to me, you get a lot with a very little amount of pressure. So I'm just barely tapping the top of this. Do not smash your stamps into your ink pads. Hi, oh, there she is. Hi, Stace. You do not need to smash your stamps into your ink pad. If you are smashing your stamps into your ink pad, you're going to destroy your ink pad. You're just going to get more ink up the sides of your stamps, and it's going to be a hot mess, okay? Stamps move. Ink pads move. You don't want goo, okay? But you can see when we stamp this down, a very light covering on there. 
nice and solid with the pigment ink pads. Okay. The new, the, um, first the finer grape, but again, only 24 colors in these. I got mine, I think, from My Craft Room is the name. I'll look them up for you, okay? This is the company, if you're brand new to stamping, I'm going to say I would invest in these if I were a brand new stamper and just knew everything that I knew today, all right? Distress Oxides come in a nice size pad. Now, they are felt. Now, what's the difference is felt is a little harder of an ink pad. There's a fabric piece on the top. So you do kind of a little bit have to give this one a little pressure. Um, but because this is pigment ink, again, it's going to sit on top of your paper. You can do so many different things with pigment inks. I mean, with the Distress Oxide inks. So Distress Oxide inks you can do blending with. You guys have all seen we make these blended backgrounds. You can mix your blending. You can stamp a nice stamp with it. You can do um, what we call the, um, the, wa the water drop where you take water and a paper towel. And you lift that up. Now, it might not work on this particular paper because I forgot this is the paper. But Distress Oxides are kind of like, um, yes, dye inks dry. Distress Oxides are, I'm going to call them the, um, what's that tool called? The Leatherman of Stamping. Okay. They kind of do a little bit of everything. All right. You can do background, you can do stamping, you can do water reactive with them, um, but they are a pigment ink now. Um, so just keep that in mind. They do dry pretty quickly. You can get them fair almost everywhere. Um, they're really not too expensive. This blending tool is a scrapbook.com domed blending tool for whoever just asked me that. Um, same as the distress, but I would say if you're brand new to stamping, it dries a little slower. You can do heat embossing on it. The colors are bright. Just a completely different animal. So these are my two favorite when it comes to pigment inks. Okay. All right. Dye inks. Which companies make dye inks? Okay. Well, Distress Ink is the original Distress Ink dye ink. Now, this ink is not good for stamping. <laughs> this ink, when you go to stamp with it, it's very, very loose of an ink, very water reactive. And, well, that one's dried out. But when you stamp with this ink, the ink kind of bubbles up. Do you see how that is, it is um, inconsistent? Okay, that's dye ink. Dye ink is great if you want to do techniques. Not good for stamping, good for techniques because it reacts easily, it moves easily. Um, it's great for techniques. If you have distress oxides and distress inks, distress oxides can do everything distress ink can do. Distress ink cannot do what distress oxides can do. So this is a better version of it. You can get these little guys in uh, minis. You cannot get distress oxides in minis. Okay. Honestly, I don't know why I still have my distress inks. I guess just because I have them. I do have some reinkers from them. These do dry out quickly. Yeah, Lee, I have one of those, um, but I only have one. Okay, so distress inks, I mean dye inks. All right, so the other dye inks, and these are the most popular companies that have dye inks. The ton has dye and pigment. You have to look on the back. She, she categorizes dye and pigment. Um, Gina K. Didn't I just have four of these on the desk? Am I losing my mind? You guys, legit. I just had four of these. Oh, oh they fell over there. <laughs> I was like, no, I grabbed a lot. Okay, my favorite things, Lawn Fawn. Um, the older mementos.
All right. But anyway, here's my point. Do you think all of these ink pads look exactly the same? Catherine Puller's a sponge ink pad. Hers are cool. Oh, I don't have hers in front of me. Hers are uh, um, it's very similar to Stampin' Up. Yeah, Hero Arts has a reactive one. Okay, so these four inks, yes. That's what I wanted to get to, Wendy, yes. So Gina K, Simon Says Stamp, W Plus 9, The Ton, My Favorite Things, Lawn Fawn, thank you. I don't have all those companies. These are all manufactured. They're all exactly the same, okay? Just because the base is white and this base is black. These are dye inks. You get all a bunch of different colors from all a bunch of different companies. You can get reinkers for them. The lids, um, they're big felt pad. So a lot of these are out there. These are a little tighter, okay? You can, you can read the description and see if it's a dye ink or a pigment ink. This is the ink. Yeah, Simon Hurley is too, I believe. All of the companies like this ink because it dries quickly. You can get a number of different colors. I mean, there's every freaking color out there and then some, all right? But these are all felt pads, so just keep that in mind. These are all felt pads. So my only qualm with felt pads for me is as a stamper, I'm kind of an, well, as a, in real life, I'm an instant gratification person, all right? I like to stamp and go. I don't like to do multiple stampings. And when I am using, I find, when I am using felt pads, I often <laughs> I often have to go in and do a second inking, okay? I like that the dye ink dries faster, but I feel like personal preference, you get better coverage with a sponge pad then you do a felt pad. The felt pads to me just feel drier when I'm stamping. So I often have to use my Misty or my stamping platform. Oops, I didn't clean that one off very well. Um, but to me, they just feel drier. That's the only way I can describe it. It's not that it's a dry ink. It's just because of the, the application on the felt ink pad is just not as smooth as it is on a sponge pad, okay? Sponge pads would be that one was a little better. Sponge pad, and that's only because that's a brand new ink pad. Like I just opened it last week. So these are all the same kind of companies. Sponge ink pad companies would be Catherine Pooler, which I have around here somewhere, not in front of me. Okay. Um, Stampin' Up. Versify and Claire, okay? These are spongier. So because they're spongier, in my opinion, it's a little easier, again, to get that ink coverage. You don't have to press really hard to get that ink coverage. And to me, it's a textile thing. It's just a lot easier to get the ink, to stamp it, and have better, clearer, cleaner results. Again, my personal opinion, I prefer the sponge pad. So you will see when I am stamping, I am normally using sponge pads, which are these guys here. And Catherine Puller. Yes, Catherine Puller inks are very nice as well. I do have a few of hers around here somewhere. Okay. They're still dye inks. Well, these are dye inks. They can be dye or they can be dye or um, pigment inks. The ink has nothing to do with the stamp pad. Stampin' Up! used to be felt. They have moved to all sponge pads. The old Stampin' Up! ones are. Okay. All right. Do we have a basic understanding of um, dye versus pigment inks? So dye inks dry fast. They soak into the paper. Pigment inks dry a little slower. They're kind of like paint. They're a little more vibrant. You can heat emboss on them. Distress oxides are kind of a mixture of both. All right, I'm going to go into real quick specialty inks. I got like super hot down here all of a sudden. Hybrid inks are a combination. Hybrid inks are like, um, distress oxides are a hybrid ink. 
It's an ink that usually stays wet a little bit. Um, I'll be honest, I don't like hybrid inks. I think hybrid inks dry fairly quickly. They do give you vibrant colors like a pigment ink, but to me, they just are very dry and very hard to work with in my opinion. I have not found a hybrid ink other than the stress oxide inks that I actually like. Hybrid inks are supposed to be fast drying pigment inks. That's what it's supposed to be. But you get a, you get a vibrant color with them. All right, I want to talk about black inks real quick. Okay, because these are what I'm going to call specialty inks. The majority of us, when we're stamping an image, we are stamping out the image usually in black and then have some kind of intention of coloring it. The only Crafter's Companion ink I have um, is this Spectrum Noir Finesse. This is the only one I have, so I don't have enough of those to make an opinion on that for you guys yet. Okay. Um, Denise, I would say if you're just starting to build up your stash, I would go with a... Uh, Distress Oxides. Oh yeah, Altenew inks. You guys know I use the mini Altenew inks. I do have the full size. Altenew inks are dye inks as well, and they come on a little felt pad. Here's the full size Altenew inks. That is a felt pad. Altenew inks are nice. They're juicy. For a felt pad, they're very juicy. What I didn't like about the Spectrum Noir ink is they didn't sell refills for these. So I only have one, and then I found out it doesn't have a refill. You have to buy a whole new ink pad. But this is a felt pad. I don't have their new regular inks. Um, Bernie, is that the intensified ink? I did order one of those and I sent it back, but we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. These are one, two, three, four, five, six black inks Nancy has. Why do you need six black inks, Nancy? Well, I would say I only really need two of these, maybe three. Okay. Let me talk about each one and what they do, okay? Um, let's talk about Copic marker coloring. Copic marker, alcohol markers. Um, the companies that make that are um, Spectrum Noir, Copic markers, Copic chows, and of course, uh, Artezas. Okay. These are alcohol based markers. What does an alcohol based marker have? Okay. You guys have all used, um, well, here you go, Bonnie. There you, go. you guys have all uh, heard of alcohol based markers. Everybody here has used a Bic marker, right? A Sharpie marker or Bic market marker, permanent markers. Oh, I have Stampin' Up! ones. Here we go. Okay. There's a lot of companies that make alcohol markers, okay? Alcohol markers are exactly what they say. They are alcohol-based ink. You can smell the alcohol in them. They dry very, very quickly, and they smooth and blend very nicely when you're coloring images, when you do different layers and different colors, okay? Sharpie marker is an alcohol marker. This is what I'm comparing it to, a Sharpie marker or Bic marker, um, those kinds of things, Okay. You cannot use regular ink when you go to color with these. Well, if you use regular ink and go to color with these, the ink is going to smear, okay? Um, you have to use what's called an alcohol proof marker, I mean ink. So let me just demonstrate that again. Um, I do not have the My Favorite Things one. I did try it. I sent it back. Oh, 
Although they're sending it as part of the new kit, right? And I am using this crappy little silicone stamp. What I have found is with most of these inks, they don't get super black. Um, so a lot of times you have to double stamp. Okay, with all of these specialty inks, I'm going to recommend a reinker. Now, if you have one of these, you don't need all four of them. <laughs> one will work as good as the others. Oh, I just did that one again. Whoops. I heard you guys tell me. All right, we're gonna give all of these a second to dry. Now, I was on the hunt about two years ago for the best alcohol ink marker. So we have Gina K, Spectrum Noir, Memento, Brutus Monroe. These are the four that I am going to test out for you guys on these inks, okay? Um, here's what I found out, and I'm going to grab a yellow marker because I think this is what I normally do when I test this out is as you start to color with them, none of these are supposed to bleed or move. Okay, and they're all pretty good. They're all in the same category for there. What I was looking for was how black was black. Um, okay, so the one that I was reaching for now, I will say, I think Gina improved her formulation. You don't have to heat set them, Stacy. You can. You don't have to. It just makes it a little easier. I, I will say you do want them to dry completely. You can see the Brutus Monroe kind of smudged a little bit because you do want them to dry completely, okay? Um, the Gina K, I, was, I got one of the very first um, when she sent it out. She sent it out in one of these big ones. I sent it back. Um, and the reason was it smudged. Every time I used it, it smudged and it drove me nuts. So I ended up sending it back. Same thing happened with the My Favorite Things. Is it the Intense Black ink? So I don't know if those have to be heat set, um, but it drove me nuts. Spectrum Noir, I recently picked up last year. Then I found out that it um, it doesn't have a reinker. So I was like, meh. Memento is everybody's tried and true. These are like your old favorite blue jeans, okay? They are the most comfortable, but you end up cutting the grass in them. You end up painting the house in them. You know, even though they're the most comfortable, they don't always look the best if you're going out to a nice dinner, okay? So Memento is the one everybody has in their stash. It is tried and true. It works. It's not super black. That's what I didn't like about it. Does it work? It works great. It wasn't super black, okay? My new go to and you guys can thank Tracy for this. This Brutus Monroe Detail Raven ink is great. I use this for water coloring and Copic markers all the time. Okay, it's a nice little size. I think it's a two by two cube. Just a little over two by two cube. Okay. Um, you just got to let it dry. You don't have to heat set it, but once you let it dry, it's super black. And I use this with my Copic alcohol markers and I use it with my water coloring too. This has been my go-to ink for a lot of projects lately. If you watch my Blue Night Rubber Stamps video, it's a smaller ink cube. So the only thing I don't like is I can't put my little handle on here because I'm spoiled now. <laughs> I can't put this guy on here, but it's a nice small size. It's easy to open and close. So if you're somebody who has arthritis and has issues, this isn't a real big ink pad. It's very small, okay? This is kind of the only ink you need. Exactly, Stacy. 
So I would recommend buying this ink and buying the re refill for it, the reinker. My girl Tracy hooked me up. She sent me the reinker. So I would recommend both of these. And I do I will link them for you. I do have an affiliate link with Brutus Monroe for you guys. Um, but this ink works great. It's super black. You get your alcohol coloring markers, water coloring. It's great. I do like that. Okay. So the rest of these, to answer your question, don't use them anymore. Have them in my stash. Don't use them. Don't reach for them. Nope. Don't need them, okay? So to recap, if you're a beginner, get yourself some Distress Oxides and get yourself some Detail Ink and Raven. All right, that's a different story, Stacy. We're going into that next. <laughs> okay. When we're talking about water coloring or um, okay, when we're talking about water coloring or color pencils or regular dye markers, okay, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Zig markers. I'm talking about mermaid markers. Uh, real brush pens from Arteza. Um, color pencils. Color pencils galore. Normal coloring. Okay. I would say these are the three inks that I go for. If I'm not grabbing this guy. I'm outside of this guy. Teresa, those are on my list, but they're expensive, and I would really love to have a set of them. <laughs> um, I don't have those yet, but I did see them the other day, and I was like, oh, I would like those. Uh, Tombow markers, normal dye-based markers, okay? Um, VersaFine Claire and VersaFine are the same thing, Bonnie. The only difference is their um, the lids. Supposedly, this formula dries a little quicker than the other formula, but it's the same ink, okay? So, stays on, pull this one out a second. Stays on and archival inks are kind of the same ink, okay? They're manufactured by two different companies. One is from Ranger. One is from Sukuneko, okay? Pretty much the same ink. You need to have a reinker for both of these. This is a specialty permanent ink that works on non-porous non surfaces. Surfaces. So if you are stamping on glass, if you are stamping on um, Yupo paper, if you are stamping on um, acetate, okay, other inks won't dry on those. Yay, Stephanie. Okay, these will dry, and they come in a variety of different colors. They come in a... Um, I don't know if stays on comes on minis, but archivals come in a bunch of different colors. They come um, as minis. Um, but this is for, I would say, mixed media artists. Or again, again, if you're stamping on acetate, if you are stamping on Yupo, which is plastic, and we stamp over alcohol inks, um, that's where these inks come in. I do like them both interchangeably. The stays on one to me smells like cherries. That's, I don't know why. It's always smelled that way to me. <laughs> um, but these are a heavy duty permanent ink, okay? Um, but you need to have a reinker with them. Um, they're kind of oil based. I don't know how to explain it. It's a specialty ink, but I would say if you have one instead of the other, they both work about the same. The majority of the time I'm using these is the stamp on Yupo paper, okay? You don't really wanna use this for everyday stamping, okay? It's not good for, um, embossing like heat embossing it's a specialty ink for a reason so i would say if you're going to use um yupo paper for stamping on yupo stamping on glass stamping on acetate correct this is very solvent based yeah cherries and almonds that's it so one or the other works good vellum i would also use these yes okay so they're kind of their own beast. 
But again, to me, interchangeably. It doesn't come off. You have to use alcohol to get it off. The only way you can get these off is to use... These are kind of like, if you think about it, if a Copic marker were a stamp pad, that's what it would be. But you cannot use these with Copic or alcohol markers. They will smear. Do not use these with Copic or alcohol markers. Okay, you want to use these with dye-based. Yeah, smell it. Smell it. Just smell it. Open it up and smell it. <laughs> okay. Um, I will stamp these out just so you guys can see. They come, this one comes, stays on, always comes with this plastic lid. You want to leave this lid on there because this ink dries out very quickly. So you want to leave that on there. It's a felt pad. I use this again. This is the ink I use when I am stamping on Yupo. It's not good to leave this ink on your stamps either because it's solvent-based. It could eat away at your inks. It could eat away at... Uh, heat embossing, things like that. Okay, and then here's the archival. Some people lean towards archival. Some people lean towards stays on. In my opinion, they're the same. They're specialty inks. There's a certain reason you need to go grab these. Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, you could use these markers for water coloring. We're going to talk about that in just a second, sunshine. Okay, all right, so I would say have one of these in your stash. It really doesn't matter, and make sure you pick up the um, refill. See, this one fits my little handle. Okay, either one of these. Clearly, I reach for the archival more than the stays on. All right. All right. Yeah, slick surface. Anything non-porous is a slick surface. It's okay, sunshine. I love questions. All right, this is... Oh, my God, we're an hour into this, and I haven't even talked about paper yet. Um, this is the Big Mama Go-To Ink. Okay? Big Mama Go-To Ink. you got to have this ink. Um, let me grab the other VersaFine so you can see what the old one looks like. I inherited, I left it for Leah. <laughs> yes, Stacy. That's why I said I'm doing this for the new guys because a lot of people don't know these things. Okay. All right. I don't know, Sunshine. Okay, so you've probably seen this one around. Stampers, we been around. Comes with this little protective little paper that goes in there. Um, you want to keep that in there. Keeps your ink moist. Um, when you flip the lid over, it doesn't come off. You can kind of hold it. All right. This is what they did when they supposedly changed the ink from this to this. Exact same company. Clearly, the flippy lid was a problem for a lot of us. Okay. You go to stamp with it, you don't hold it right, you got issues with this ink pen, <laughs> okay? But because it was the best ink on the market, we put up with it. We put up with it for a very long, long time, okay? Okay, so VersaFine, also known as Sukaneko. Sukaneko is a Japanese company. We love the Japanese when it comes to our art supplies. Um, came out with a new lid that comes off and a spongy pad i don't think this one's spongy is it no this one's a felt pad so they came out with a spongy pad it's a sponge on the bottom but felt on the top but you'll never know the difference it's a spongy pad okay um and supposedly i don't know if this is true or not this formula dries faster it dries faster, but still allows you to heat emboss. Both of these are pigment inks, so they allow you to heat emboss over them, which is great, okay? You guys have seen me use them. I used them yesterday with um, ink blending tools. You can ink blend with them. You can stamp with them. However, 
this is the best ink in my opinion because it is truly super black, okay? I have gone through a lot of black inks. Now, you guys just saw me stamp these guys out, and yeah, they're black. Can you tell what the difference is between super black and regular black? You can tell the difference. Here's the Spectrum Noir ink. It's just not as black, okay? The Brutus Mo Monroe ink is way more black. Like, you can just see the difference. So, when I want to color an image, specifically when I'm doing water coloring or color pencils, this ink is crisp and it is black. And because it's a sponge pad, I don't need a lot of pressure and it stamps right the first time. Exactly, Stacy. If you're going to be doing silhouette stamping, like Stacy says, um, blue, blue night rubber stamps, this is the ink you want. Now, do not mistake that you want this ink over this or archival, okay? Different formulas, different things to stamp with, okay? If I'm in a pinch between these two, depends on what I'm coloring, I can probably get away with just having this one. But if you can have two different black inks, these are the two black inks you want. This is great for water coloring. This is great for heat embossing. This is great for sentiments, okay? So uh, if you are just starting out in the stamping world and starting to build your collection up, Nancy would suggest these three inks so far. This one for your everyday stamping, coloring, and methods. This for your regular stamping, you're going to use this 90% of the time. And this for your kind of everything else 10% of the time. As you get better, I would then maybe throw in an archival ink. But you don't really need this right away. Stacy agrees. Yes, that's one vote for Nancy's beginner stamp class. <laughs> Okay, why do we need different colors? Because that's what we do. We have full set syndrome. <laughs> the different colors are nice because if you're going to be doing heat embossing, the only heat embossing um, you need is clear. You can stamp this in any color and you have clear ink. If you're going to be doing any kind of, good night, Marissa, um, techniques, it's nice to have this ink. Now, if you have either one of these, they pretty much work the same way. For me, it's personal preference on the stamping pad. I like the soft, squishy, spongy pad over the hard felt pad. That's really my only difference, is this is a hard felt pad. Yeah, we have full set syndrome. We have to have every color. This only comes in, I think, 24 colors right now. I personally like the soft, spongy pad. Good night, Kirsten. Okay. Yes, Catherine Puller inks I would put very similar to these. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. I do have, a, I don't know where my Catherine Pullers are. I do have a few of them. I don't have a whole bunch. But I found they were the same as the Versify and Claire, and it was the same company selling them when I went to the stamp show. So I bought a couple of these and a couple of those. I just tended to reach for these. Goodbye, Roxanne. Yes, these are just very, very, very dark, very black. Okay. The only other thing is I think the Catherine Pooler's inks stained my um, ink pad, uh, my stamps. I think that's the reason why I stopped using hers is they stain the ink pad. Okay, so the last ink I didn't talk about yet. Does anybody have any questions before I talk about Versamark? Yeah, I like that too, Stacy. You're right. Yeah. You can check out Catherine Puller's um, pages. I don't have any of those, but I think I got one, Stacy, and I gave it away because it was like really dry. 
That might be. Okay, what is Versamark ink? Versamark ink is a super clear, sticky ink. They advertise it as a watermark ink. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about this ink. If you search Versamark ink on YouTube, that is Nancy's number one video. You guys, you guys have made this video 100,000 views. Hold on. Over that. Let me show you. Oh, uses for Versamark ink. This is my video. It's only 13 minutes long. You guys, it has been watched 127,000 times. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that, okay? So I'm not gonna go into a lot with this. You can go and watch that video because that video, I really break it down and all the things that this ink can do. Versamark ink is your go-to ink for embossing. It's your go-to ink for watermark. It's your go-to ink if you are using colored inks. Let's say you only have dye inks and you want to emboss over it. You can stamp with the dye ink and then go back and stamp over it with the um, clear ink and you can heat emboss over it. Um, what else do I do? I do a resist with it, okay? Um, so it's a fun ink, and it's a good ink to condition your stamps. And we haven't talked about stamps, so we're going to segue into stamps here in just a second, okay? So when we have brand new stamps, um, it's nice to stamp them with Versamark ink first. Versamark ink is going to condition your stamps. It's going to protect them from staining, and it's going to help you get a little bit better stamped image because it helps the ink adhere to the stamp better. And I'm going to show you that right now. Yes, tone on tone. It's very sticky. This is a great ink to have in your staple collection because there's so many different techniques. But I'm going to say it does take longer to dry. It is super sticky. Go back. You don't need embossing ink. I don't have any embossing ink. I don't have any Perfect Pearls medium ink. You don't need any of that stuff. You only need this ink. And if you go back and see, um, it helps pan pastels stick. Or remove. There's a lot of techniques you can do with Versamark ink. You can do don't tone on tone. All I'm going to say is just go back to um, Nancy's video on this. It's a 13 minute long video, but it's so worth it because I go into four or five different ways you can use this video. Okay, this is now they have some that have shimmer and stuff in them. You don't need those. Don't buy them. You only need this one and you definitely need the refill for it. And you can tell it's a staple on Nancy's because it has a handle. These are all the inks that are at my fingertips right here. All right, I want to talk about stamps. Are we okay with ink? All right, let's talk about stamps. Stampity stamp stamps. All right. In our world, there are basically three types of stamps. Oh, I'm go I hope you guys are picking up some stuff here. If you go back to my older videos, I do have a stamping 101, stamping 102 classes like that, okay? I'm just trying to grab stamps here off the desk. Okay. Whoa, Cherise, what is that? A video with embossing folder and the ink on a three compartment wedding invitation card. You mean um, a trifold card, honey? I did do a wedding card like this. Okay, Cherise, I will. All right. Let's talk about inks. I mean, stamps. We talked about inks. So for inks, you have dye inks, you have pigment inks, and then you have what I'm going to call specialty inks. For stamps, you have three types of stamps. talk about the first two. So you have silicone, photopolymer, and rubber stamps. Uh, Cherise, I do. It's probably about three years old. I, I made wedding invitations for my best friend. They are with Anna Griffin um, 
embossing folders. Okay. Silicone stamps. And uh, cling, they're all, they can all be cling. All cling has to do, cling and wood mount are how you stick it to your stamping. That's all, that's all the difference between cling and wood mount is. Any of these are always going to be cling, usually. And then these are going to be either cling or wood mount. Okay, that's just, cling or wood mount is just how it sticks to the stamping block. Okay, so you have, um, like these are red rubber stamps, but these are um, cling mount. So this, all that does is it tells you how it sticks to the block. That's a cling mount. But we used to call these red rubber wood stamps, but they're, they're no longer wood stamps. Okay. All right. Hi, Barbara. Okay, so let's talk about stamps. What are the difference between silicone stamps and photopolymer stamps? This is the number one question I get asked and people email me all the time. Um, again, go back. I have a video that tells you how to kind of tell the difference, but I'm going to give you guys a rundown here. Okay. These are both known as clear stamps. They're clear. You can see through them. Okay. However, one is far superior over the other. Okay. Silicone stamps. I am going to say that I do not recommend buying silicone stamps if you can help it. If you find that it's, wow, too good to be true, that's right, Stacy. silicone sucks. And I am going to plug my channel here and say I do not endorse using companies like uh, Wish.com or um, what's the other one I tell you guys not to buy from? Uh, the other Chinese company, okay? You guys know who I'm talking about. You don't want to use those companies because what these companies do is they take photopolymer designs. Yes, that's it, Jennifer. They take photopolymer designs, they steal them, and they print them onto silicone stamps, okay? You might say, oh, I'm not spending $25 on that kitchen sink stamp, so I found one on AliExpress that I can get for $6. It is not the same. First of all, it's stolen. A lot of these companies are companies that make and manufacture their stamps in the United States, okay? Do not be fooled in thinking, oh, it's made in China and they're stealing the designs. These stamps will tell you made in the United States, okay? Spellbinders, Hero Arts, um, Creative Vision Stamps, Kitchen Sink Stamps. Um, the, the, those stamp companies are photopolymer stamps, okay? What's the difference you guys are saying, okay? The difference is silicone stamps, what do we use for it, silicone? When I say the word silicone, besides boobs, what else do you think? <laughs> I know you guys all just laughed. <laughs> silicone stamps. Silicone is what we use to caulk our bathtub with. When your bathtub starts to link, leak, you put silicone around it, right? What is it designed to do? Keep the water out of your bathtub from going through the wall, right? Here's a silicone stamp. Look at how stretchy that is. Okay? What these are made, how these are made. When you guys do baking now, everything's a silicone mat. Why? So it doesn't stick, right? How these are made is these are injected into a mold. They're injected into a mold and they're pulled out. So they're very cheaply made when they are injected into a mold and they're pulled out. When they're injected into a mold and pulled out and they're that stretchy, wow, 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 wow. I got, I want you guys to remember this when you guys are at home and you're messing with your stamps. Look at how much that stamp stretches. Okay. This is what those stolen companies are selling. Now, this is not a stolen stamp set. This was a free stamp set. <laughs> Okay, whenever companies offer free stamps, how many of you guys follow me when I go to Barnes and Noble and I buy those big fat magazines that have free stamps? Okay, <laughs> free stamps are usually silicone. Silicone is designed to resist ink. 
okay? So because it's designed to resist ink, it is the cheapest quality of stamps. It is usually priced the cheapest quality, usually, and they don't hold up. They will normally yellow over time. They will literally melt on you. They disintegrate. Um, they get brittle and dry out. They're just not great stamps. Now, I'm not going to tell you not to buy them because I buy them. So that would make me hypocrite. The only time I buy silicone stamps is when I really like the design and I know I can make it work. Okay. So this is a free stamp set. Happens to be Crafter's Companion. The majority of Crafter's Companion stamps, unfortunately, are silicone, and that is why I usually do not buy them, okay? They do have a small handful of their stamps that are photopolymer. You won't know until you get it, because they label all of their stamps as clear acrylic stamps. They do not differentiate if it is silicone or if it is photopolymer, I'm sorry. They just don't. You don't know what you're getting with them until you until you open it, okay? The other companies that are out there, Simon Says Stamp, Kitchen Sink Stamps, Hero Arts. Um, who else do we have? All the big name companies, they use photopolymer stamps. They don't use silicone, okay? All right, so for free stamps, you're usually going to get these. Sometimes they don't even stick to the block. That's how great they are. And if you use a regular dye-based ink, they don't ink up very well. Oh yeah, there's a difference in smell. These don't smell. They don't ink up very well. So when you go to stamp with them, do you see that? You see how that ink beads up? Do you know why the ink beads up? Because silicone is designed to resist Resist baking, resist in your bathroom, okay? Silicone stamps are a cheap alternative to stamping, and it's an insult. That's why they're free, okay? That's why they're stolen and made in China. If you're a newbie, try not to buy them if you can help it. Now it's going to happen. You're going to buy them and be like, oh, shoot. It just happened to me. I just ordered a stamp set and they came in and I thought they were really cool. And I was like, oh man, they're silicone. Right. Now, photopolymer. Oh, let me show you how to condition this. What do you do when this happens? This is what you do to fix this. You condition your stamps. Okay. You take a little eraser, any kind of eraser, a regular eraser. Okay. And you gently kind of you give it a little dermatology um, scrub there, all right? We're just going to lightly scrub the surface of that, okay? The second thing you're going to do is you're going to stamp it with your Versamark. If you didn't lose it on your desk, here it is, okay? You're going to stamp it with your Versamark ink. What is this doing? It is removing some of the adhesion on the stamp. I'm sorry, it's removing some of the residue on the stamp. And yes, we're exfoliating the stamp. We're giving it a facial. We're gonna exfoliate it, and then we're gonna fill in its pores with Versamark, okay? This is gonna condition your stamp to accept ink better. Same stamp, two different results. Yes, we're doing dermabrasion, okay? The third thing you can do to make sure that these stamp out better, and I'm gonna grab a, another brand new one here that I have not conditioned yet. Oh, and it's not unlikely that these are very hard to remove from their carrier sheets a lot of times. You gotta wrestle them and they do rip off, okay? The other thing you can do to have better stamping is to use pigment ink. Pigment ink sticks to everything because it's like a paint. Okay. So pigment ink doesn't care that this is a silicone stamp. Pigment ink says, I'll make it work. I did not condition that stamp. Okay. Now, if you don't want your stamps to stain and staining doesn't hurt, silicone stamps will never stain, by the way. You only need to condition it once. When it's brand new, you condition it. A little rub rub, a little fill in. You don't have to do anything. Okay, once it's done, you don't have to do it again. 
once and done, okay? Those are for silicone stamps. I have to get on my high horse for those because everybody calls and asks me and emails me about that, okay? My personal favorite stamps are photopolymer stamps, okay? Photopolymer stamps are manufactured through a UV light. So here's what happens. The artist draws their design, okay? Then this design is printed out and it's put through a machine with this gel, with a UV light. The UV light will harden the stamp and when the stamp is hardened, that becomes our stamping area. Everything else melts away, okay? Photopolymer stamps do have a little bit of a smell to them. It does go away. It's very difficult to stretch photopolymer step, stamps, okay? They normally stick to blocks better. They are kind of sticky. You can just use a little soap and water if they lose some of their stickiness. But these guys are great because they take ink immediately. It doesn't matter what kind of ink you use, it's gonna absorb into the stamp. Now, every once in a blue moon, when a stamp is fresh from the manufacturer, you might have to condition it. Um, but usually after you stamp it twice, you don't need to worry about that anymore, okay? I like, too, that you can see through these and you can do a different placement of them. And overall, they're just a better quality of stamp. More and more manufacturers are going to this kind of stamp. Um, it's easy to store. It's light. Um, you can just, I don't know, just the better. Now, if this stamp, now, see, it's already starting to stain with that purple ink, which does happen. If you have OCD and you want your stamps to look nice and crisp and clear, and I don't want my stamp staining, same thing. You take a little bit of an eraser if it's not ex accepting that ink, because this is there's a release formula on these stamps when they come out. So sometimes they do beat up a little bit, but it's nothing like silicone stamps. So we take a little eraser to it. We take our Versamark to it. And now you don't have to worry about your stamp staining. The Versamark fills in all the pores on the stamp and kind of gives it a protective layer. And then you don't have to worry about it staining. But it is normal for these stamps to stain. It does not hurt the stamps. Now, some people don't like it when they're doing layered stamps because you want to see where you're layering your next layer. I get that. Um, so you may want to Versamark those. You'll see when I do kitchen sink stamps, a lot of time I'm Versamarking them when I'm stamping them up for the first time, inking them up. All right. Do we understand... I always recommend cleaning my stamps. I am going to say that. Back in the day, we didn't clean our stamps very well, okay? I use microfiber towels. These things are light, they're cheap, they don't leave any kind of strings and residue. I used to do. I used to be a baby, a baby wipe girl, okay? And I went through a ton of baby wipes, but I had a baby back then, she's no longer a baby. Um, so I went through a ton of baby wipes. Since I've gone to the microfiber towel and I have used the chamois, Okay, I've used this chamois, I've used this chamois. Here's what's wrong with the chamois. You gotta keep the chamois moist. You know what happens when you keep a moist chamois on your desk? You guys already know. It gets moldy, it starts to stink. I do occasionally use the stamp scrubbers, so I have a stamp scrubby brush, and I have this stamp scrubby sponge, but again, I gotta keep it wet. If I don't remember to keep it wet, it gets dried out and hard. So, Microfiber towels. I have four of them over here in my little cart. They're all kind of turning gray and dark and stained, but guess what? These are clean. These all just came out of the washer about a week ago. They don't smell, so they're stained. Big deal. I don't get ink on my hands. I don't get ink all over my paper. I don't have a smelly, moldy smell in my room. And these go many, many, many uses before I have to think about washing them. Okay, microfiber towels and a little bit of Hero Arts cleaner in a 
and a squirt bottle. You can get microfiber towels anywhere. I think I got a pack of 25 on Amazon. I think that's the link I have for like $10 or something. I have them in my cars. I have two cars I have them in. I have them under every sink in the bathroom in case you got to do a quick wipe down of the sink or the um, um, thing. And then I have these in my drawer. So microfiber towels are great. And we're saving the environment. It's bad enough we're killing trees. <laughs> Yeah, you can get them and you can get microfiber towels anywhere. Okay. Um, the spongy thing, I do want to show my little scrubby. Hold on. Um, oh, that purple sponge was from Stampin' Up. I don't know if they still sell it or not. I will recommend my little scrubby buddy here. This is from Close to My Heart. If you can find a Close to My Heart consultant, it comes with a little, it looks like a shoe cleaning brush. Yeah, I spray the sponge with water to moisten it. This is cool. It's a little box and it has these little bristles. And if you get stains or sticky stuff inside, you know, when we were doing foiling and things like that, sometimes you get stuff in your ink paint. You can use this little scrubby brush from Close to My Heart. I don't, you gotta find a Close to My Heart rep. Um, this is a great little guy. I never use the lid, I just keep the sponge out. Okay, do we understand the difference between silicone and photopolymer clear stamps now? If a clear stamp is clear, it's one of these two. I don't care if they call it acrylic. I don't care if they call it acetate. I don't care what they call it. It's either silicone or photopolymer. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's one of those two. Okay, silicone sucks. Photopolymer's better. Okay, photopolymer stains will stain. Stamps will stain. It's fine. It doesn't affect the stamp. You want to condition the silicone ones if you're going to buy them and use them. And we don't buy from Chinese ripoff artists. All right, let's talk about rubber stamps. Rubber stamps are your tried and true stamps. Okay. My mother-in-law called me the other day and she goes, I watched your YouTube channel. I had no idea what you were talking about. I thought you were going to stamp some stuff and color it. <laughs> and I said... Well, that's not what stamping is anymore. And she goes, yeah, I saw that. You were doing some kind of fancy thing with a machine and everything got all shiny. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> um, oh, no problem, Deb. I got your email. <laughs> okay. Um, I use a nail manicure brush. I have one upstairs in the bathroom. And I clean my stencils, my stamps, um, things like that upstairs. Bye, Stephanie, honey. Okay. Rubber stamps. Now, I say rubber stamps come in different colors because they do. They're not just red anymore. Okay, they're red. They're purple. They're gray. I mean, really, they can come in any color they want as long as they're rubber, right? Rubber stamps are the superior stamping stamp, okay? Rubber will outlast photopolymer stamps, okay? However, you do need to kind of keep these safe. They will crack as they dry out over time, but if you use a good conditioner when you are cleaning your stamps, they work great, okay? I am going to say that's very important. Do I have my Nancy stamp? Where's my Nancy stamp? somewhere over the rainbow. I have an original stamp that's over 20 years old, and it's my name, and it's starting to crack, but I love it. I don't use it anymore. But back in the day, Nancy did not know how to clean her stamps. So a lot of my older stamps, unfortunately are now starting to show their wear. All right, so, oh, that was the example I wanted to give you. Did you hear that? You see that? This stamp set is now rock hard, okay? Look at all that ink laying up in there. I did not take care of my stamps. When you have older red rubber stamps, you want to use a good stamp cleaner, okay? There are many companies that manufacture stamp cleaner. Okay, 
Okay, here are some of the ones that I would recommend. Do not, do not, do not use baby wipes or alcohol baby alcohol based baby wipes do not use clorox wipes anything that has a harsh detergent in it is going to destroy your stamps you want a stamp that has a conditioner worst case scenario use a little bit of soap and water mild soap and water okay all of these stamp cleaners have a little bit of exactly oil in them Okay, that helps to condition your stamps. They have a little bit of a different purpose. This is an old one that is an old Ranger one. Yep, still says Ranger on it. And it just says water-based stamp cleaner. Oh, Stampin' Up has one too. I don't have that one in front of me. And so does Close to My Heart. Where is all my stuff at? Okay, so these all kind of do the same thing. And the idea back in the day, I keep saying back in the day, is that we would spray them on baby wipes or spray them on a paper towel. Now we use, um, this is our old Stampin' Up scrubby. It's just a soft cleaner. What we would used to do is with this old Stampin' Up scrubby, which they don't sell anymore, is one side we would spray the cleaner on. We would take our stamp and rub it in on there under those little bristles. And then on this side, you can see the little soapy residue in there. We would, um, yeah, I love it too. I wish they would bring us back. We would dry it. Now, Ranger does sell a brick, a, a little stamping brick like this. I, there's, there's companies out there. But that's how we used to clean our stamps, okay? But now that we've moved to um, using microfiber, you'll see a lot of people use the microfiber rags or the chamois. Um, it's all the same thing, okay? So... Um, and they have a little bit of a smell. You just got to find one you like. I know Brutus Monroe sells a good one as well. He has different scents that come out. But this is uh, from Ranger. This is from Sizzix. This is the brand new one from Heidi Swap. And you can see when you're cleaning that it leaves. Like you can tell there's something oily in there to clean your stamp. And it's designed to clean your stamp and condition your stamp. Okay. Um, the one that I like to use, I have two that I reach for. This is the one I use. This is the Hero Arts Ultra Clean. I don't use this full strength. I, I dilute it in a little bit of water and I put water. This is an old hairspray bottle. Um, I just use some of this, but you can see it's a little thicker. It's, it's got, it smells like Windex. Um, uh, but I just use this majority of the time. So I have this and my microfiber rags, okay? Um, when I have stamps that I've used stays on or archival on, stays on or archival inks are a little harder to get off. Again, it's a permanent ink. It's built into the stamp, right? This ink is designed to be permanent. That's why it's called stays on. That's why it's called archival. Okay, you don't want to leave this sitting on your stamp because it's got a solvent in it and we don't want it to eat away at our stamp. So they sell two companies that I use. One is Stays On. You can pick this up at Michael's. And all you do, it's a little dauber top. Mine's very old, but very well used. And you just ink that over. You can see it even comes out black. <laughs> but it rubs right off. No problem. Okay. The other company I found, and I found this at a stamp show, is called Kiss Off Stain Remover. You guys may have used this in your laundry. It's a, like a grease pencil, and I rub that on there. Sometimes you need a little water, but that will usually take it right off. So you just want to make sure, listen, your stamps are going to stain. They're not going to look brand new all the time. That's okay. Just make sure that you want to clean them and put them away properly when you're done. There are some artists that never clean their stamps. I am not one of those people. I like my stamps clean for the next time I use them. And it prevents cross-contamination. When you go to stamp in your other ink pads and you didn't clean your ink last or stamp last time, you're not going to be happy. So always clean your stamps, okay? Now, red rubber stamps have the best detail. Um, they absorb all kinds of ink really well. 
They have a little bit of give to them because they usually have a little bit of a spongy background. Now you can buy unmounted stamps that are not cling mounted. They're sold as plain stamps. And then you buy that mounting stuff that I showed you guys yesterday, the cling mount stuff. So here are the Stampscape stamps I ordered. And they came unmounted, which means I just get a strip of rubber with the stamp. And I put these on a thinner cling mount so you can see it doesn't have the sponginess behind it. This is a thicker cling mount. So you can see this is a thicker sponginess, personal preference. I don't mind the thin cling mount because I use my Misty to stamp or my Tim Holtz to stamp. This is thicker cling mount. If you want to unmount your wooden stamps, a lot of people pull their wooden stamps off. You can mount it on this stuff and then you make yourself a cling stamp. Oh yeah, good point, Stacy. We're gonna talk about that, good idea. And then I just stick it to a piece of acetate and I keep these in my little storage pockets where a lot of people like these, um, these uh, old DVD Stampin' Up! cases. You can cling mount these in here too. Okay. I just like keeping mine on a little acetate and then I put them in the um, my little plastic uh, baggy storage bag and then I put them in my little baskets. Okay, so that's the difference between silicone stamps, photopolymer stamps, and red rubber or just plain rubber stamps. Okay, for, for daubers. Okay. I didn't even get to paper yet. I wanted to go over. I just wanted to give you guys, like I said, a quick rundown of if you're a beginner and you're just starting out. I know a lot of people have joined my channel recently. We are almost to 15,000. We're going to do a giveaway. And I want to thank everybody for emailing me and all your donations for the giveaway. I am floored by your generosity. I would love to be able to do 15 giveaway boxes. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen this time around um, in light of everything going on. But you guys have all been emailing me and saying, hey, I have a duplicate stamp. Hey, I have this. Would you, do you want it? So anything you guys send me, going to go in the, in the generosity of the giveaway. And I appreciate that. Um, oops, just put that one away in the wrong spot. Okay, so let's talk about these little dauber thingies because Miss Stacy was bringing that up. All right. Um, Stacy, do you want to link the Facebook group right to... Yep, I'll link everything. Um, that address, I talked about the address thing earlier, but if you want to link it so they know we're going to do a card exchange and you got to fill your address out. Okay, so we have a couple of different things to use for blending. Um, and blending is fun when we're doing backgrounds. And you guys, um, if you've seen my cards and videos, Nancy likes to do sunsets and galaxies and uh, ocean themes and clouds. Okay. So in order to get this background, we went through a stencil, a cloud stencil, made this cloud background. Um, we use different uh, daubers. Okay, so we have a couple different daubers. We have finger daubers. Okay, 
And these do go old after a little while and you gotta kind of throw them away. But again, we're poking them through stencils and things like that. Some are higher mount, some are lower mount. Doesn't really matter, okay? We have, we're going back old school. This is the old original um, blending tool from Tim Holtz, okay? And we use this tool, and back then we were lucky if we had one or two, and this is what would happen. It would unglue, just like that just did. Um, and they were great because we used them for ink blending with a little foam pad, or we used them for alcohol inks with a little felt tab, okay? I don't even know if you can find these square ones anymore. Maybe you can find the refills, but I don't think, this is hair stuck to it. I don't know if you can find these anymore, but we used to have a drawer full, where some of us still do, of these little felt pads, and then you would use these for alcohol ink. Um, you know, you just kind of smush around and you would do techniques, but because of the square shape of this, you would get harsh lines on your ink blending. Spectrum Noir has them. So, let me just show you again. Yeah, it's the only ones I see are these, the felt ones for, for alcohol inks. Oops. So you would go in your ink. I know that's orange, but but it would just be kind of harsh on the line. You would see kind of these streak marks, all right? So then Tim Holtz came out with these little round guys, okay? And these changed the crafting industry because now these guys are round, they're cute, they're small, we all love round, I'm round, okay? And you go into your little ink pad, and now the line is not as harsh, not as harsh, and it's just cute and smaller, and you can hold it like this and hold it anyway. So when he came out with his two different ink companies, ink, ink formulas, Distress Ink and Distress Oxides, he specifically explained, do not mix your daubers, okay? So here's what I did. I put a little piece of um, hook and loop tape or um, Velcro. <laughs> All right. And I put these little guys on the back there. So I know my distress ink pads, you don't want to go back and forth between distress inks and cross cam contaminate your ink pads. So distress oxide, distress inks. Okay. Um, these I just kind of throw in a drawer and I have like 10 of these now. So I have one for every color family. So each one has their own dauber. Now, as they stay to get old and crusty, the felt starts to come off. You can clean them. You don't have to. I never clean mine. Um, but I keep one for each felt, each family. But as the felt starts to pull away from the sponge, then, excuse me, you throw it away and you go to a new one. They sell them in 20-piece packets. Okay? And the alcohol ink felt you can also get now for these round daubers. Okay? Now, scrapbook.com has kind of moved the lever, moved up the notch here. So this is the old Ranger one or Ink Essentials, whatever you want to call it. They both have the same kind of handle. People have made their own. Somebody made some out of old chess pieces, which is really cool. But all it is is just the hard part of Velcro and then it sticks to felt. So scrapbook.com came out with this domed top, okay? So the domed top doesn't leave any kind of lines at all. It's really smooth because there's no hard edges to it. So that's kind of neat. Now, a lot of us have also invested into the makeup brush industry. Not for our faces. Oh, no, ladies. We don't care about makeup. We care about ink. So, these guys, and the, there are some expensive companies out there that are selling these brushes for $50, $60. Okay. You can go on Amazon and get a whole set for like 10 20 bucks, you guys. Not that I'm not saying those brushes aren't worth $50, 60 I'm saying I'm not spending $50 or $60 on them, okay? So this little 
set here I got off of Amazon for I want to say $15 okay they all have different heads and I have started to put washi tape on mine so that I can kind of remember what colors they go to um, these came from a pack somewhere at some kind of dollar store okay these came from five below these are called face one these are five dollars each so you can see there's a couple different sizes from those here's another one and then here's another one i found cheek i don't know from some kind of dollar store but um their makeup brushes they do the exact same thing but these seem to be a little softer of a blend. So you got to work these a little bit more. It's a little softer of a blend. So you can see, I know it's hard for you guys to see on camera. But I got to put down a couple of layers of ink to get to where the sponge dauber was. So the sponge dauber gives you more coverage, more color easily. The makeup brushes are just a softer touch at doing it. Okay. So I didn't spend 50 or 60 bucks. Now, I know there's this really cool company. I would love to have them. But again, $50. They got white handles. They got different color ink bristles. They come, you can get this little Lazy Susan to spin it around. Hey, that's cool. I'm not in the crafting uh, beauty contest. I'm in the crafting save my money contest and still get what I want. How many of y'all on that? I know you all just lied too because you spent just like $8 billion on foils. <laughs> but I still love you guys. <laughs> All right, so don't cross-contaminate your daubers. Um, different ways you can buy a little spinny thing to store these on. You can throw them in a drawer, whatever you're going to do. But they do come in handy when you're using stencils or when you're doing any kind of ink blending and just doing that kind of stuff. And hey, I, I give these companies credit when something new comes out. Of course, they're going to try to make all the money they can off of it. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Let's see here. Oh, my gosh. 141 people. What? Oh, I'll fix that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sunshine. You can have my car. Do you want the Lexus or the Ford? <laughs> okay. I want to get into paper. All right. Are we good on ink? Are we good on stamps? Are we good on that all we talked about? <laughs> Should I carry this to tomorrow? It's 9 o'clock. How about we talk about paper tomorrow? Because I kind of want to give an example of each paper, and I think that'll take a while. So we'll talk about paper and coloring elements tomorrow. How about that? So tomorrow we'll talk about papers. Tomorrow's Saturday, right? <laughs> So I want to talk about papers because there's a lot when it comes to paper, you guys. And I want to talk about, you know, markers, color pencils, coloring elements. Um, and you guys can also write down any questions you have. But when we talk about paper, we're going to talk about, you know, we have this coated cardstock. We have black paper. We have white paper. We have colored paper. We have stamping paper. We have specialty paper. We have what is the difference in weight of paper? Why is this paper different from this paper? How come this company sells two of the same paper? What is all of this? What is fake paper? How come you have a stash of this paper a mile long? What do we do with transparency film? And what the heck is vellum? <laughs> I know it's supposed to wane tomorrow, you guys. <laughs> So, obviously, I don't have everything. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so let's do tomorrow, 7 p.m. We'll talk about paper and coloring elements. Hopefully you um, took something from today. Like I said, I've, I've only been a card maker for eight years. I've been a scrapbooker for almost 20 years. And we didn't have YouTube back then. So Nancy bought everything in Michael's and thought, oh, I got to have this, got to have that. And we only had Michael's. I didn't have a Hobby Lobby or an AC Moore back then. So um, hopefully I gave you guys some information to, to work on. I'm going to clean up my desk now and uh, go bother my children. And then tomorrow we'll do paper and coloring elements. And if you have any questions, please email me, nancystamps15 at gmail.com. Oh, Carmen, we don't have toilet paper, but we got, we got coffee filters. We got paper towels. We got Clorox wipes. We use hand sanitizer in the basement. I found three bottles of hand sanitizer down here. <laughs> crayons oh that's a tough one remind me i have gelatos i have gelatos all right i'm gonna put all my inks away and i will see you guys tomorrow if you like this video please give it a thumbs up 7 p.m eastern that's right virtual hugs i live in philadelphia so i have an eastern time clock so 7 p.m eastern I usually come on between somewhere between 7 and 8 p.m. If you are not subscribed, click the subscribe button and it will let you know when I'm coming on live. And we've been doing this every night live to keep you guys occupied. And we've made so many new friends. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, it's Foiling and Stamping Fun on Facebook. We accept everyone, no matter what your skill level is. I don't care if you live next door to me or if you live all the way out in Australia with my friend Margaret. Or if you're in California, um, like Melanie, yes, pu push the subscribe bell. Um, my friend Tracy and I started that group as a non-endorsed Facebook group. What does that mean? It means we are on a couple of design teams, but we are not sponsored by any one company. We support companies that we like their products, like Hero Arts, Altenew, um, Creative Vision Stamps. Um, so these are companies that we found give us good products, have the right price, also have good customer service. We always try to support U.S. companies. Obviously, there are companies we support like Crafters Companion Spectrum Noir, which come out of the U.K. Um, we have links on pages. We have discounts um, like Craft Stash and things like that. So anything we can do to help you be have a supportive team we you can talk to anybody you can show us all of your projects if you want to sit back and be quiet and be shy we're okay with that if you want to post a video every day like my girl sunshine every day i love it i want to see how you're keeping yourself occupied and we are your friends we're virtual friends but we want to get everybody through this difficult time we all know we're missing work probably sick and tired of our husbands and kids probably tired of cooking meals three times a day so if going to your crafty space for 15 minutes a day, or in my case, 15 hours a day, <laughs> that's what we're here for. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. Please join our Facebook group, Foiling and Stamping Fun. And please join our card exchange. I posted a form. Everybody needs to go on that form. And fill out your address and what country you're in um, so we can join the card exchange. And we're probably going to make three to four cards and send them out to whoever you want to, whoever you get as your pen pal card exchange list. And you, there's no rules. You make as you can make your card as nice as you want, as complicated as you want. You can make it any season you want. You can use inks. You can use foiling. You can use crayons. I don't care what you use. You're just going to brighten somebody's day when they open their mailbox and get that card from you. That's right, Kim's in Alaska. That's on my bucket list. Yes. All right, enjoy your Friday night. 
I will see you guys tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. Suzette, join up. Uh, fill out the uh, worksheet. If you can, Stace, that would be great. Stacy's going to pin it. I love you all. Be safe. Be kind. Be supportive. Thank you, Stacy. And share, share, share. We're coming up to 15,000 subscribers. And we want everybody to be part of our fun little group. Okay, bye, guys. Have a good night. Thank you, Gloria.